have, you know, had on-the-job injuries and who have, you know, gone into office or administrative positions have learned how to do billing and have gone into those kinds of positions. Uh, so with additional training, whether that's on the job or formalized training, uh, EMTs and paramedics can do billing, just like a biller can learn to be an EMT. Uh, but being an EMT doesn't make you a biller, and being a biller doesn't make you an EMT. So with, just with the additional training, <laughs> uh, I'm confident an EMT or paramedic could be billing, but they can't just because they're EMTs and paramedics. Is there a distinction in your mind between the person who is the EMS director and the person who is the biller? Is there a what? I'm sorry? A distinction. Oh, sure. Yeah. Typically, the EMS director is not the person who does the billing. And why is that? Uh, because an EMS director, you know, that's a general title, but generally when you speak of an EMS director, that person's responsible for staffing and for uh, operations and for, you know, making sure that equipment's being maintained, schedules are being met, that, you know, trucks are being deployed where they're supposed to be, and, uh, you know, personnel hassles, and I've always thought of the EMS director as somebody who has, you know, more global responsibility for operations as well as for management, uh, and they would not be the person who sits down and does the billing. In some cases, EMS directors oversee the billing. Uh, but uh, very few are uh, immersed in the details of billing. Is it your opinion that the person actually doing the billing needs to review the narrative report and the uh, codes and the modifiers to make certain that they are correct? Yes. And why is that? Because if the person who does the billing doesn't do that, uh, I don't know who else will. And the Medicare and Medicaid and other insurers uh, insist, rightfully so, that when you submit a claim that it's accurate. And is that one of the reasons you testified that the biller is expected to have the skills necessary to interpret narrative reports? Yes, that would be one of the reasons. Did you have uh, any follow-up with the IT person at the City of Clinton with regard to uh, Mr. McGovern's explanation? No. Now, did you have any follow-up with regard to uh, any server upgrades uh, at the City of Clinton? I'm sorry, follow-up, can you repeat the question? Yeah, we're cutting out a little bit, I'm sorry. Did you have any follow-up with um, anyone regarding server upgrades or updates at the City of Clinton and when those might have occurred? Hold on just a minute. Let me see if there's any other questions I have. Sure. <coughs> Did you have an opinion from your review whether or not the realtor, Mr. Schulheis, overreached uh, in his complaints in this case? Yes. Um, yes, I guess based on my limited vantage point uh, of just looking at documentation, uh, there did not seem to be overreaching. The theory of liability in the complaint was plausible based on the documentation I saw. Did you find uh, from your review uh, that there was uh, medical necessity for the trips that you did review? By and large, yes. Uh, I, I don't recall being uh, alert, being concerned about a medical necessity problem in, in the documentation. I thought most of the services merited transport uh, to the hospital. Most of these patients needed ambulances, from what I remember. But uh, um, my only you know, main concern was the dispatch uh, documentation. And were you aware or made aware that at least one of the uh, specific allegations uh, in the relator's complaint involved a situation where there was no bill? Where there was no what? I'm sorry? No bill. No bill? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure 
I understand that characterization, but. Uh, in other words, let me ask that a different way. Did Mr. Walker tell you uh, that one of the specific examples in the federal complaint involved a situation where the city of Clinton did not bill for the service? As I sit here today, I can't recall that, but I read the complaint, so if it's in the complaint, I would have seen it at the time I was doing the work. What you would have seen was an allegation that the uh, patient uh, was billed. But did anyone ever tell you that that was inaccurate? I, I don't have any specific recollection of that issue in the case, so no, I don't believe that anyone did. Okay, that's all I have. Any questions? No. No. Mr. Sutton. No, nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Wolfer. Thank you. I think we're going to take the witness out of order. Is Kip Ireland here? Kip? There he is. Good. <clears throat> Mr. Ireland is being called, John. Mr. Ireland is being called on behalf of uh, yes. Mark. He, he's got a, 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 a commitment. Yeah. We discussed this at our pre trial. So, so the commission members know um, Mr. Fry is calling Mr. Ireland, and we agreed to allow him to be called out of order because he's got a commitment. Would you please stand and uh, raise your right hand? Uh, do you promise to tell the truth? Yes. Your son is very proud of Thank you. Could you tell the commission your name and occupation, please, sir? My name is uh, My name is Kip Ireland, and I am the owner of uh, Professional Claims Group, a uh, <coughs> ambulance and chiropractic billing company. And how long have you owned an ambulance billing company, sir? Uh, I've had this one for three years. And before that, were you uh, involved in another company that did uh, similar work? Yes, yes. And uh, how long were you involved with that company? Seven years. Okay. Now, in uh, 2010, did you uh, have occasion to do some work with the Clinton Fire Department uh, with regard to documentation for emergency medical services? Yes. Can you just tell the commission what you did? I was asked to come in to uh, discuss uh, issues about proper documentation uh, for the ambulance services. I've uh, been doing this for about 10 years. So uh, most of the uh, classes that I did, I've, I've been in four different states, uh, spoke at the Iowa EMS Association conventions, so most of the classes are based on uh, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, and uh, just a proper way of doing documentation for ambulance services. And uh, <clears throat> did you do that for all the shifts at the uh, Clinton Fire Department? Yes, I did. Uh, do you know who arranged to have you come and, and do that documentation training? Andy McGovern. And uh, did he tell you the reason uh, that he wanted you to come and do some documentation training? Uh, first of all, he wanted to uh, polish it up. He wanted to make sure that the uh, guys understand that the importance of documentation uh, is necessary, so he had me come in and do that. Exhibit R, R13, I believe. Yes, <clears throat> it's 
Exhibit R13. Uh, and can you just tell the commission what that is? The last line. No, the what is the last page here? This document called Emergency Medical Service. Oh, the free hospital, the free hospital class. form class. Yes. Um, yeah, I sent this to uh, Andy. They needed my credentials so they can get uh, CEUs uh, for the class. And is that basically an outline of what you were going to teach in that class? Yes. How did you find the members of the Clinton Fire Department uh, in responsiveness and uh, interest in your class? Very responsive. What was your impression of the Clinton EMS service and the paramedics in the fire department when you were here? I was impressed. Uh, why is that? Um, they've got protocols for documentation that I've never seen any other ambulance service that I've dealt with in the past. And what do you mean by protocols? Uh, there was a uh, uh, documents that uh, Andy had showed me. This is uh, um, information that he has given to his uh, members of the ambulance department, uh, step by step, what they need to do. Is in fact, it was more uh, impressive than what I give these guys. Uh, did you keep a copy? Yes, I did. <laughs> and what are you using it for now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm <clears throat> going around telling other ambulance services that they should seriously start using uh, what these guys use. Do you see in Exhibit R12 the can you see that all right? Did bring my glasses. <laughs> Maybe I can help. <laughs> Probably <a> hurting. <laughs> oh, those look good. Try, try those. <laughs> a little older than you, but they do help oh, me. That looks good. Okay. All right. Would, would you? Uh, there's several policies here. Would you look through that uh, exhibit 12 and see if the policy that you're talking about is is in that exhibit? <laughs> Very detailed, very nice references, look really nice. Right. Pretty cut and dry, you got your purpose, the scope, and the guidelines. You're looking now at policy number 100.22, which is incident documentation, patient care reporting. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. And that policy was, was dated when? Effective uh, May 28, 2010. Okay. If I would, I mean, this this is kind of the stuff that I teach the guys and gals, but words like drunk, words like the patient stated, we go over this over and over and over and over and over again with with uh, with paramedics and EMTs. They have to be very specific, but they also have to be uh, making sure that they're not saying that they're drunk or that there's ETOH on board. A lot of uh, EMTs, if they put down that the patient had ETOH on board, obviously they had to do a, a, a blood draw to get that actual chemical. Well, they understand now they have to state whether or not the patient was drunk by stating, patient states, I was drunk. So, I mean, this is, this is really nice how they got it all laid out. You're looking at page two of uh, that uh, patient care report uh, yeah. policy uh, in paragraph two, the second uh, bullet point. Yeah, that is the PCR factual or objective. Uh, that's uh, a, a big uh, part of the class that I give is making sure that the uh, that the paramedics and EMTs understand that they have to be objective and, and not that think, oh, you know, just because he's staggering, just because he smells 
uh, fruity or smells like he's been drunk doesn't necessarily mean they're drunk because there are some patients that are diabetic and when they're low sugar, they smell and look like they're drunk. So you gotta be very careful and, and be very objective. This is very good stuff. I wish I wrote it. Yep, thank you. You're gonna need these. You're older than I am. Now, uh, in your uh, experience, would you characterize then the Clinton Fire Department as very professional? By far one of the 